Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on non-linear sequences and in particular looking at the Fibonacci sequence. Now before I start I want you to take a look at these images and have a think. What do they all have in common? Some may say they have a swirl and that's right and there's something very important about this swirl or pattern which is formed. It's formed using a sequence known as the Fibonacci sequence. And this is the pattern that's seen every day in life, and it's a huge part of nature. The sequence is named after the 13th century Italian mathematician, and the sequence appears throughout nature. It's sometimes called nature's secret code. Numerically, it's 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, so on and so forth, where the next term is formed by summing the two previous terms. Each number in the sequence is called a Fibonacci number. So let's have a look how the sequence is formed. Well, starting with 1 and 1, these are our two previous terms. So to make the next term, we sum these two previous terms to make the 2. Now to make the next term, we need to sum the two previous terms. So that means it's 2 add 1, which makes our 3. To make the next term, we sum the two previous terms, so it's 2 add 3 to make the 5. Then this sequence continues, 3 add the 5 to make the 8, and so on and so forth. And this is Fibonacci's sequence. There are different types of sequences using the same rule. I'm going to start with two 5s. Well, to make the next term, it's 5 add 5, which is our 10. To make the next term, it's 5 add 10 to make our 15. To make the next term, it's 10 add 15 to make 25. Now another type of sequence could be found with these two terms, minus 2 and 2. Well, to make the next term, we sum the two previous to make 0. To make the next term, we sum the two previous to make 2, so on and so forth. These sequences are known as Fib type sequences. But this sequence here is really what Fibonacci is known for. So now we know what Fibonacci's sequence is numerically, let's have a look at it pictorially and link it to our swells. Well, we know from Fibonacci we start with a 1 and 1. So here you can see I've drawn a 1 by 1 and another 1 by 1. Now summing 1 and 1 gives us 2. So now I'm going to draw a 2 by 2. Now to make the next term, all we do is sum 2 and 1, which makes 3. So now I'm going to draw a 3 by 3. To make the next term, it's 3 add 2, which is 5. So let's draw a 5 by 5. To make the next term, we know it's 3 add 5, which is 8. So I'm going to draw an 8 by 8 here. And to make the next term, it's 8 add the 5, which is 13. So I'm going to draw a 13 by 13 here. Now, to make the next term, we know it's 8 add 13, which is 21. So I'm just going to draw my 21 here. So now I have all these wonderful shapes. Let's see, we can create our curve. And it's really simple. All we need to do is connect from one diagonal to another. So let's start here. You can see here, I've simply connected from one vertex to the opposite vertex. Repeating the same again, another vertex to its opposite vertex and repeating the same again and again. As you can see, as I do this over time, we've formed our beautiful swirl. And this is how this beautiful spiral is created. So now we know Fibonacci's sequence as a set of numbers, and we also know it as a picture. Let's have a look at some exam questions. In this question, it gives us the first six terms of Fibonacci's sequence. And it states that the rule to continue a Fibonacci sequence is the next term in the sequence is the sum of the two previous terms. We're asked to find the ninth term in the sequence. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Well, let's identify what we know first. Well, we know the first term is 1, the second term is 1, the third term is 2, the fourth term is 3, the fifth term is 5, and the sixth term is 8. So in order for us to work out the seventh term, we must sum 
5 and 8 together. This identifies our seventh term to be 13. Now we know our seventh term, we can work out our eighth term by summing our 8 and our 13. This gives us the eighth term to be 21. Now the question wants us to find the ninth term, and the ninth term is when we sum the 13 and the 21 which gives us the ninth term to be 34. So now let's have a look at another exam question. Here the question says the first terms of a different Fibonacci sequence are a, b and a plus b. We're asked to show that the sixth term of the sequence is 3a plus 5b. So let's start by labeling each term first. Well, we know the first term is a and we know the second term is b. So, to work out the third term, it confirms that the third term is a plus b. Now, to work out the fourth term, the fourth term is where we add b to a plus b. So, collecting our like terms, I have the fourth term is a plus 2b. Now, to work out the fifth term, it's the fourth term add the third term. So, it's a plus b add our a plus 2b. Collecting all our like terms gives us our fifth term to be 2a plus 3b. Now, to work out our sixth term, it's simply our fourth term add our fifth term. So, our sixth term is a plus 2b add our 2a plus 3b. Collecting all our like terms gives us our sixth term to be 3a plus 5b, which is what's confirmed in our question. Now, the next question. It says, given that the third term is 7 and the sixth term is 29, we're asked to find the values of a and b. We know the third term is a plus b. So, substituting what we know to be the third term, which is 7, I have now formed an equation. a plus b equals 7. We also know the sixth term is 3a plus 5b. And the question tells me it's 29. So, making 3a plus 5b equal to 29 forms another equation. Now you might be able to spot we have a pair of simultaneous equations to solve. I like to label each equation. So I'm going to call this equation 1 and equation 2. Now I like to make the first term the same when eliminating. So I'm going to find my lowest common multiple of my first two terms. The lowest common multiple is going to be 3. So I'm simply going to multiply my first equation by 3, giving me 3a plus 3b equals 21. I'm going to just rewrite my second equation as I have my first term as 3a already. From here, I'm going to rename them equation 3 and identify this again as equation 2. Then I'm going to subtract because I want to eliminate my 3a's. So, I'm going to do equation 2, subtract equation 3. 29, take away our 21, gives me 8. 5b, take away 3b, gives me 2b. 3a's have been eliminated. So, now I know 2b is equal to 8. Therefore, I can solve to find b is equal to 4. Now I know b is 4, I'm going to substitute it back into equation 1 because equation 1 is super easy. So, I know equation 1 says a plus b is 7. Substituting our b is 4, that means a plus 4 is 7. So, that means I know a must be 3. So, in summary, we've introduced the mathematician Fibonacci and looked at how each of his terms are formed to make his sequence. We've also looked at Fibonacci types and how they look in an exam question. Some of you may have noticed I designed these pictures to mirror the pictorial representation of Fibonacci's sequence. And perhaps some of you may have even noticed it in this final slide. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.